first, let's talk about Australian drinking water. And I don't mean, Caleb, South Australian drinking water. I don't know what it is with Adelaide water, but there is no worse taste. Yeah. It, it, is, it is legitimately water. the worst water in the country. Why is Reputedly, it? there are only two places in the world where <laughs> cruise ships will not dock and take water, and Adelaide <laughs> is apparently <laughs> one of them. What's the other one, do you know? I don't know what the other one is. Who cares? Adelaide is bad Probably enough. Kangaroo Island. <laughs> well, look, the taste of Adelaide water is the least of our concerns. The bigger problem is Forever Chemicals. A report out this week states that Forever Chemicals recently declared carcinogenic are allowed in Australia's tap water at 140 times the maximum level now considered safe by the United States. Now, the forever chemicals, so-called, because they never break down in the environment and they take years to leave the human body, are known to cause serious illnesses such as uh, cancers and birth defects. So, taking all that into account, the Biden administration has recently passed legislation to ensure that levels of forever chemicals, specifically PFOS and POFA, don't exceed four parts per trillion in drinking water. Now, they say no FO, none of these uh, forever chemicals are safe at all, but at four parts per trillion, it's barely detectable. Well, in Australia, uh, the uh, levels of PFOS are 70 parts per trillion, and PFOA at 560 parts per trillion. Now, the Australian Health Department says they're currently looking again at uh, the levels of chemicals in tap water. The issue of forever chemicals came to international attention recently when the 3M company was forced to pay out $19 billion for uh, poisoning America's waterways. And here in Australia, when the Defence Department paid out $366 million because uh, people were affected by chemicals in their firefighting foam that was also leaked into the water system. Both of these cases are featured in an upcoming documentary uh, called How to Poison the Planet. Have a look. 3M, the only company that made these chemicals, knew PFOS was toxic. I am getting into general population's blood. And yet they told nobody anything. All these kids were dying of cancer. Basically on the doorstep of 3M's headquarters. Generation after generation exposed in the name of profits. That's the goal of our trial, to tell that story. This story, it's playing out all over the world now. Wreck Bay in Australia. Devastation has been caused. PFAS bleached out from Defence Force bases. All these different cancers have come to our community. Ten brothers, all problems. We found a massive brain tumour. Our land's been poisoned. People need to be made accountable. The Reg Bay community take class action against the Commonwealth of Australia. We've lost a lot. 90% of 3M's PFOS was produced after they learned it was toxic, after it killed monkeys. This has to be the most explosive information that I've found. How could this happen? That documentary comes out on April 28. Now, the EPA in the United States say the decision to limit forever chemicals in drinking water will save thousands of lives and reduce serious illnesses by tens of thousands. So it begs the question, Liz, why has not Australia moved yet if America are making such a dramatic cull? Indeed. Time to get yourself a serious water filter. Firstly, I don't think Breeder cuts it when we're trying to get rid of PFAS out of our drinking water. But also, before we applaud the Biden government uh, too hard for this, this was only due to a deathbed crusade carried out by a brave young woman called Amara Shaw. She died at the age of 20 due to liver cancer. And in her school alone, there were 21 cases of cancer. All these young kids, just tragic, tragic story. But that's what it took for the Biden administration to finally move on this, which is surprising given <coughs> that studies show PFAS the results of people imbibing them constantly is costing the US $250 billion a year. Check out this headline from January. That is a lot of money. And as the headline notes, that is more money than the COVID outbreak cost. I mean, that's just 
incredible. Oh, it doesn't include the the uh, number there, but it is two hundred and fifty billion a year, as that article details. In fact, it's not just the water, but in ninety nine percent of food, a study carried out in January found ninety nine percent of food in the United States of America, just in your average shopping center, contained was laced with basically. PFAS. So people can't get away from this. Neither can you, neither can I. And why, like you say, why is it taking the Australian <clears throat> government so long to catch up here? Notably, Carrie Fellner, who's the Aussie journo who wrote the article we're talking about today and was also featured in that doco you just saw there, the Australian accent comes across like a punch in the face. <laughs> She's immersed herself in this issue for over 10 years. So if you want to talk to someone who's full bottle on the issue, she is. And she revealed via the Sydney Morning Herald just last October that 3M, this company that we're talking about, knew back in 2003, because they'd done studies, that the average Australian had 20 times the amount of PFOS in their system than was safe, than is considered safe. PFOS is actually the number one most dangerous out of the PFAS family, which is over 10,000 different chemicals. And our Government had done nothing to act against this, not even the top three worst ones. So how interesting is it that the same month that Carrie Fellner revealed that, last October, uh, Tanya Plibersek came out and said, oh, so we're going to move on banning the three worst ones. And it was like, would you have done that if this news hadn't just broken about how effed up our water is and you knew the whole time, didn't you? And you did absolutely nothing about it. So now we're seeing a tiny move in this space. And like you say, the government tells us, oh, yeah, our water's under review. Mm. Do something about it and do something about it fast because as per those numbers in the States of how much they're spending on people who are made unwell by these things, so many people here today in Australia, there's massive links to cancer with PFAS, <coughs> uh, hormonal disruption, uh, your immune system being shot by this thing, all number of health issues. And who's to say anything that they may or may not be suffering is due to this constant consumption because the government's done nothing about all these different manufacturers using it in their products on an unknowing, unsuspecting public. It's disgusting. It's criminal. Well, well what's, why do you need a review? I mean, I thought... Uh when the US instituted rules about, you know, car emissions, we were told, well, we've got to do it because the US has done... We didn't require a review for that. The yeah. US has done it, therefore we must do it. Well, the US has limited it to four parts per trillion when we are much higher, as you said, 70 parts per trillion for PFOS and uh, 560 parts per trillion for, for PFOA. PFOS, by the way, uh, used to be in food packaging and Scotch Guard, which um, I'm sure many of you at home may well have put on a, a new couch when you bought it to try and uh, extend its its lifetime. And PFOA was in Teflon, which uh, of course is used in nonstick pans, etc. So it was leaching into the food you were were eating. It's leaching into the water systems. The US has already done something about it. How hard is it to turn around and simply say, well? We are following their lead. You don't require a review for that. You just change it. But I've got to say, I'm so glad I don't drink tap water. I drink wine instead. And I think <laughs> that will render me much safer in the end, to be perfectly honest. And